Water heaters. I've been wanting to do a little bit more of an in-depth video on water heaters and how they should be installed. So today is a good day to do that. So in this closet, we had these two units that were made in 2002. They were in here and they were both leaking. It is now 2020, so <clears throat> probably been installed about 18 years. So they're definitely past their lifespan. Well, they had been leaking and the platform had collapsed. They had some bricks underneath the units to prevent it from further collapsing, but it just wasn't supported anymore. They did not have drain pans and they did not have the relief valves plumbed outside. So looking at this, this is more or less what you should see when you have a water heater installed or if you're if you are doing it yourself. So we've got the water line coming outside from the drain pan. So that's just a one inch line hooked up to both pans coming out one single exit. Over here I've also got the relief valve plumbed into that one inch line via a threaded union there. Um, if this was a long run and it wasn't supported you would not necessarily want your relief valve plumbed into your drain line because you could have backflow problems. Say this was all in line, water came down, it could go into your pan and cause rust. Um, or if you had a really long run or it wasn't supported, the heat from the hot water coming out of the relief valve could make the PVC really flexible and cause it to pull apart. So you do want to be careful as far as how you terminate your CPVC or copper or whatever line <coughs> you are using to terminate the relief valve. Now normally that gets plumbed out all by itself. However, this is the front of the building and they did not want more pipes sticking out of their brick. So this was the best compromise to that situation. But check your local codes um, or what your inspector will allow out here the plumber was fine with it just going into the PVC. Alright so the drain pans. The drain pans need to be at least two inches larger than the water heater itself or should have two inches around the unit. Um, that being because the water can leak down kind of anywhere and it needs to go into the pan and the pan needs to be able to handle the flow of the water. So make sure that your pan is larger than your water heater, which these are 20 inch wide units, and that's a 24 inch pan. Um, up here, these are both vented out because these are propane heaters. Um, you have the water coming in. Water comes into this first unit, goes out of the first unit, out of the hot side, into the cold inlet of the second unit, and over to the hot back into the system. This type of setup is called um, in series, when water heaters are installed in series. So basically, this first water heater, there's one of two ways you can run this. You can set this up as a tempering tank, so that as water comes in, it warms up just <clears throat> because it's in a warm area and it has time to reach more of a room temperature as opposed to just coming straight out of the ground and going into the tank. So this can actually be left completely turned off and this can be turned on to regular temperature. This one will wear out quicker but this will help um, just with the fact that the water will have time to warm up to a degree um, before this. But most people will not just have this as a tempering tank or an expansion tank of sorts. Most of the time what you're going to want to do if you have these hooked up in the series is you will want to, and these are not turned on right now, um, but you would want this on low. So as the water comes in it gets heated up, like I said, to more of a room temperature. So say you're getting it up to 80 degrees, the water's coming in at maybe around 50 50 to 60 degrees um, here in Texas, and then you're taking it up maybe to around 80 degrees. Then this next unit would be set to normal. It would be set to hot. 
Okay, so when the water is leaving the tank, it is leaving the tank at the appropriate temperature, around 120 degrees. This first unit does half the work getting it up to that temperature. The second unit gets it the full way. Now, these units will wear out at different rates because you probably aren't going to be able to get the units perfectly balanced so that this one's burner is on the same amount as this one's. It's probably just not going to happen. This one will probably wear out sooner. Um, but the nice thing about this is you don't have to worry about balancing the unit so that one unit is getting more pressure than another. Um, you can just uh, turn this one off if you don't want to use it, um, which you can't really do in a balanced unit or you know a, a unit hooked up in parallel. So say you've got, at least in this place, um, this is a retreat center, so say you're going to have... 20 people out here and you need more hot water. All you have to do is just turn this up to hot, have that one up to hot. Now both of these units are going to be heating the water up. Um, this one will be doing most of the work because it's taking cold, cold water and heating it up. But you're going to have a ton of hot water being produced by these two units. And then once the 20 people are gone, turn this one back down to vacation or low, leave this one at hot and you've just got regular hot water going through. Um, yeah, uh, you could do the reverse as well. You could turn this one up to hot and leave this one on vacation. Um, but the problem with that being that the water would be heated up to 120 degrees from here, then go into this tank, it could potentially cool down if nobody's using it. So you not want to do that unless you had a specific reason for doing that. As far as the gas line coming in, uh, the gas line did not have a sediment trap. So a sediment trap needs at least a three inch leg on it and the line has to go, has to change 90 degrees in order for the sediment trap to work. Like it couldn't have this T flipped horizontally because the debris could go right over the leg. It has to hit a wall and fall down. Be the sediment needs to be able to fall down because uh, junk does move through these gas lines or can potentially move through the gas lines. So the manufacturer typically wants a sediment trap in between the shutoff and the regulator. So you can also put the sediment trap over here and attach it directly to the unit. Um, at the time that the sediment trap was put in there the water heaters were not yet here so the sediment trap was just put on the shutoff valve and that's fine as long as the flow of the gas has to change at least a 90 degree angle in order to have the sediment trap function so both of them are plumbed the same way um, let's see I can't think of anything else this platform here uh, is built to withstand all the weight this is going to put at it. It's got multiple legs. Uh, the 2x4s that are supporting it across here are about every 6 inches, 6 to 8 inches. So there's lots of support going across. The last stand was made with 716 OSB, and it only had this one leg right here, and it had maybe one middle support that cracked in half. So make sure that the platform that you build for the water heater is going to be able to withstand the weight. Obviously, these two 50-gallon units are going to be right around the 1,000-pound range, including the water heater and everything with it. So you definitely want to make sure your platform can withstand 1,000 pounds being on it if you have two units. Um, yeah. You got insulation wrapped around the pipes up here. That just helps a little bit with heat loss. Um, not too big of a deal if you don't have it, but you will lose a little bit more heat. Uh, so this is more energy efficient. And I don't have the pipe insulation going all the way back because most of the time, if there's a little bit of backflow here, which these um, units have backflow uh, prevention nipples on them, but if there is a little bit of backflow, typically the heat seems to stop right around here. 
most of the time and when water's flowing in it's not really an issue it's more of when it's just sitting there an expansion tank is definitely another option with units like this it just helps when there's an influx of pressure however having two units and having the relief valves plumbed outside if the units ever do go above pressure water will come out of the relief valves and if you notice man my relief valves seem to be opening up fairly frequently which would be obvious by water coming out of that pipe then you can always add an expansion tank later uh, that's just another safety feature that you can have or a recirculating pump there's a bunch of different things you can add on to these that can make your system more efficient or to get it to do what you need it to well that's about it as far as what you should look for in a water heater install and understanding a little bit more on the way water heaters can be hooked up in series to provide more water um, more hot water to whatever it is you're doing hope that has been helpful